Today I want to talk about attaching one of these rotary slashes to the three-point linkage of a tractor. Now the first thing to talk about is safety. These are dangerous things and if you get any part of your anatomy underneath it when it's spinning, uh, you'll lose that part of your anatomy for sure and you might even kill yourself. And then uh, on the drive shaft itself, um, it's got a sheath to protect it um, and if you get anything wrapped around there like a scarf or a tie or something like that, uh, it's going to kill you, that's for sure. So always look at the manufacturer's safety instructions before you do anything and obviously don't ride on here when this thing is in operation. Um, and if you have a look at this sign, that says it all. Very, very dangerous instrument, so watch out. Now, as the name implies, a three-point linkage has three points of attachment. At the bottom, you've got two pins like this, um, one on either side. There's one, there's the other one, and at the top, you've got this slot here, which takes another pin from the top linkage of the tractor, which is this one. It's this pin here, which you just take out and slot in when you're ready to attach it. And this linkage is adjustable there. Uh, so you can set your implement level or at whatever angle you want to set it at. Now the first thing to know about three-point linkages is they come in different sizes. Category 1, Category 2 and Category 3. Category 1 is the smallest, that's this one here. Uh, this is a small tractor, so it's got a Category 1 attachment there. So you've got to make sure that your tractor attachment and your implement attachment are the same category. If not, it's not going to work. But some implements, like this carry-all, have got dual attachment. So on the inside there uh, is a category 1, and on the outside there is a category 2. And you can see the category 2 is thicker and uh, it's wider apart than the category one. And that shows you the whole thing. The ones at the bottom are category two, but that's just a different height adjustment. But because category one is smaller and narrower, it's got to be on the inside and it's a narrower pin. Right, now to attach it, uh, it's a little bit tricky. The first thing you have to do is reverse your tractor up to your implement. And what I normally do is set um, the tractor's attachment a little bit higher than the implement's attachment and then reverse up to it and try and get your tractor square in line with your implement. And what you'll do first is attach the two lower linkages and then go on to the top linkage. And once all three linkages are in place, then uh, you worry about attaching your drive shaft. And your drive shaft, as I said, has got a universal linkage and uh, it attaches to uh, the drive shaft of the tractor, uh, which is normally covered by a little cover like that. And there you can see the spline of the tractor. You'll notice in the middle of the spline is a little slot there. And that's for locking the drive of the slasher onto the drive of the tractor. Now the universal joint has got this little spring-loaded pin here which if you depress it like that it allows you to slide the universal joint onto the tractor's drive shaft and then when you let go it locks it in that groove I showed you on the drive shaft and if you look inside you look inside when I press that button you'll see that shaft inside moving and then a slot appears. And that slot allows you to slide it on and when you let go, it locks it onto that groove that I showed you on the drive shaft. So that's how that works. Now, a word about reversing up and attaching your three-point linkage to your implement. Uh, the tractor's three-point linkage arm, the lower arm, has got an adjustment. If you press this lever down, you can pull that out like that. And uh, that allows you, 
if you're not quite in the right position, you've got some adjustment. And then once you've uh, located it on the pin, then you push it back again by reversing the tractor up against the implement until it clicks in like that and locks in place. And both sides must obviously be the same so that your implement sits square uh, on your tractor. The other, the other adjustment that you've got, so that's a length adjustment forward and backwards. The other adjustment that you've got, if you take a look there, is this little arm here. And this arm has got a series of holes in it, uh, which if you pull the pin out, if you remove that pin, you can now swing left and right. So you've got all that adjustment there. So this helps you when you're actually trying to line everything up. You've got those forward and back adjustment and left and right adjustment, and that should allow you to get it right. But obviously, you've got to get your tractor pretty close. Right, I've reversed into more or less the correct position. And so now we're going to have a go at attaching it. You can see I'm still a little bit high there. But I'm going to release this arm now so that I've got that adjustment. And then I'll go to my three-point linkage lever and just lower it a bit. And if you go too low, it doesn't matter because you can pick it up a little way. So we're more or less lined up now. We're just going to go in a bit. Now you shouldn't have to put too much pressure on it because you've got all those adjustments but uh, I very often just use a little block of wood and a hefty hammer and just gently tap it on. Not a good idea to use your hammer directly on this metal because it's cast metal, it's quite brittle and if you uh, fracture that, that's the end of it. So then we take the locking pin and we lock that one into position like that. And then obviously you'll do the same thing on the other side to lock that one into position. I've got everything lined up more or less and uh, this is adjustable so I just need to push it quite firmly and there we go. And then again we'll put in our locking pin like that, and that's that done. Now our next task is to just reverse the tractor a little bit so that these um, adjustments lock. And once they locked, then we'll go on to finding the appropriate hole to put a pin in there to lock those from side to side movement so that your slasher doesn't touch the tires of the tractor when you're driving. Now it's important to try and use the same hole on each side so that your instrument sits square on your tractor. So we'll do that now. Right, you saw that lock into place. Now we can go on to putting the locking pins into these lateral attachments. Um, this one is three, three from the end, so I'll put it in there, and I'll try and get the other one more or less the same. One, two, three from the end, so that's where we want to be. Right, I'm going to have a go at attaching the drive shaft now. I'll just do this first because with the top linkage in place you might not see it clearly. So we'll just lift it up like that. And I'll just get it going on the shaft. You have to depress that button, as I said, get it down. And there it goes. And then just move it forward and back till it clicks. So you have that click, now you know it's locked in there. And then cover that as much as you can. And then you've also got the cover on the top here to protect that rotating uh, universal joint because if that grabs something it's going to be serious. Right now finally the top linkage 
I'll just get that pin out of there, take this pin out, and this is just locked in here, just have to get it off, comes down to there, and this is adjustable, this one, so it's not serious that it doesn't line up because we've got this adjustment. There we go. So that's the easiest one to attach because of it's got that screw adjustment then. What right then finally I do some adjusting on this adjuster here and you'll notice these chains are slack. I like to get them tight and I like my slasher to cut in the front first so I want this lower than the back. I just find it's more efficient if it's cutting like that but it's more or less level you know it's not a big slope forward. So now these chains are quite tight, so that's about right. Then you've got a locking nut here, and you just tighten that a little bit. And that's it done. Now we're ready to do some slashing. Right, now to operate the slasher, this particular tractor is an automatic, so it's very simple. Uh, you just click the switch, and your slasher will be activated when it's at the right height. And then if you look at the rev counter, you need to be at about 2,400 revs to get your slasher spinning at the correct speed, which is 540 revs. And you can see that green indicator line there. But when you lower your slasher, it suddenly clicks in at whatever speed you've set it at. And if you lower it at 540, it'll work, but it puts a lot of strain on your drivetrain. So what I do is I lower it at low revs until the slasher starts spinning and then I slowly bring up my revs to 540 to take some of the strain off the drive shaft and then I pull away slowly and do my slashing. And then you can set the height of your slasher. It's got to be close to the ground before it'll switch on. That's a safety feature. But you can set the height of your slasher with your three-point linkage uh, control lever. Uh, and you can see it's graduated. So once I get it down to the level that I'm happy with, uh, then I know which graduation I'm working on and I can carry on and I don't have to think about it. And in fact, it's even got a little uh, thing that you can lock uh, at whatever level you want so that when you lower your slasher, you know it's at the right height that you've determined you want to slash at. And there we go, the job's done. Nice and neatly slashed. Now if you found this useful, please like and share this video and subscribe to this channel if you haven't already done so. And if you have any questions or comments, we'd love to hear from you. If you just scroll right down to the bottom, you'll find the comment section there. Thank you very much for watching.